Oh, it's another day. It's another <laughs> recording. What's funny? It's your vein. Yeah. Because this one is interesting. I mean, it's from a comment, so I'm happy about it. All right, guys. Uh, welcome back to another video. Uh, my name is Kwame, and this is... Hi, I'm Elaine. Yeah. And we do record videos every now and then, but yeah, it has not been so much of a while because we released a video last week, so we've done well. Um, yeah, but before that, we were busy, so we hadn't released a video in a while. But this one is inspired by a comment that I received. And, you know, our video, uh, I think our second video together where we did our culture shock stories, which is one of like our most viewed videos. If you haven't seen it, I think you should. Uh, it will probably pop up here. Somewhere <laughs> on the screen. You should check it out after you finish watching this. But um, this one is more of cultural differences within the relationship. So this is the comment. I'm going to read out the comment. And we're probably probably going to put it on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to read out the comment. And then we're going to try and answer this question for this lady. So she says, hey, I would like to hear how your how cultural differences made your relationship and ultimately your marriage either harder or easier or more fun because my boyfriend is Cameroonian and I'm from Serbia in Europe. I'm always in fifth speed making plans and making plans, having everything arranged for the future and he's more with the go with the flow and laid back, which makes me so frustrated sometimes because it teaches me how to hit the brakes on other things. Thanks yeah, so for two sides. Yeah, thanks for a great content. You're welcome. We are trying. Yeah. So, <laughs> so she is also in a um, relationship. I'm from Netherlands. And I'm from Ghana. And from her, um, I don't know if I should put her name there. No, but that's not no, necessary. No, don't do that. Yeah. yeah. So her, her boyfriend is from Cameroon and she's from Serbia. And I think here I'm thinking the efficiency and, you know, doing things being functional and practical versus somebody who in ghana like we do go with the flow like things take care of themselves you still do things yes but they still take care of themselves in a way and she wants to know how mm -hmm. we have managed our cultural differences we have not managed <laughs> no i mean every day there's something new right yeah it's not like um, oh we are now we are here, like uh, everything is solved. Yeah. So it's always a process, I have to say, and it never stops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are never done as people. Yeah. Um, that's maybe good to first stress. So uh, I don't know where, which angle we're actually going to take it from um, on our cultural differences. Or maybe you can share what a remarkable one is in your eyes from my culture. And if it makes it more fun, frustrating, or sad? <laughs> um, I think I can um, see where she's coming from with being on top of things and being functional and like having to do things, make plans, like quickly, you know, yeah. be, keep moving mm -hmm. whilst the boyfriend is rather laid back. So I think it's a European thing that's your efficiency runs through. Yeah. It's a fast-paced um, environment than it is here. Yeah. So but it's also a fake sense of control in a way. You, you consider it a fake sense of control? I honestly think, okay, what Ghana taught me is that... I mean, we don't have so much control as human beings. Yeah. There's a lot, like, if... 99% is out of our control and that 1% of our own actions we actually control. Mm -hmm. So, but in Netherlands, I can only speak from my point of view, I don't know about Serbia, but in Netherlands, people really try to hold on to that planning of the day as if that is something, they are the ones creating the day. But in Ghana, you keep space for unexpected things to happen and that is often where life happens so the magical things 
That's Look at you being all philosophical <laughs> and like, okay. The very demand, life unfolds there in these small moments where you are not on top of things. Because life is not supposed to be controlled, honestly. That's my main critique about how people live in the Netherlands. There's so much control. They know in the morning they wake up, they know exactly how their day is going to look. And it's nice, but it also sometimes makes you unfulfilled because you're when you're in one thing you're already looking up to the next thing because you know after this coffee after i have 11, to go here oh i need to watch that okay yes but i'm meeting that friend there and i have to cycle there but on the way i have to get to hema to buy this and this and this otherwise i won't be able tonight to do this it gives a lot of stress okay do you think you're gonna be able to <laughs> go back to the netherlands to live there i think so it's just hmm so I think my friends, I don't know, but they can comment if they're not agreeing. Okay. <laughs> my friends are used now to that. I don't really plan ahead too much. So what if I, I can text you on the day in the morning, I'll text you, can you hang out tonight? In Netherlands, no, people have six weeks to eight weeks planned ahead. I'm not kidding. At least that's the feedback I get. I don't work like that. I don't know if I'm up to seeing you in eight weeks time. I'm not. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm not in the mood. So how can I plan something eight weeks ahead? I might not even be here anymore. You know, I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow, let alone in eight weeks. Yeah. I might live on Hawaii or something. Hey, okay. <laughs> Living in Hawaii, okay. Um, so for me, I found Ghana balanced me in a way because I used to be very structured and just like that, but it didn't really serve me that much. What do you mean it didn't serve you that much? I got stressed. You're trying to squeeze so many things into the day. Uh, oh, you mean your, your Dutch ways didn't serve you that much? Yeah. So, so for, 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 for this person, what we are trying to um, answer yeah. here is that now you're saying this and it's relatable to her she should rather look at embracing uh or understanding it's more of understanding the two worlds and yeah, finding, a, middle finding ground. A, a way for yourself to Adapt. that makes it work yeah i'm not saying like be cameroonian you cannot yeah or change your ways completely no, but like there's see. a range of options right you can plan six weeks ahead or you can plan one week ahead I plan mostly in a week, I know a little bit what's going to happen or the things that I find important, I try to plan. Yeah. But the rest, well, I might be too tired. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. But so, I don't know how you perceive it, watching the Dutch way of doing in Ghana. Um, the, the Dutch way of doing things in Ghana, what do you mean? I think I'm still Dutch and do things the Dutch way. Hmm? Yeah, you, you're still Dutch, but you have adjusted. Yeah. You have adjusted. Mm. And I think for you and your partner in your relationship, where, where I am, um, you find that if you're going to be from completely different um, upbringings and cultures, you are basically going to be building bridges your whole life together with your partner. So how do we navigate this? I think that the core of all of these things and even what we're going to be going through in this particular video, talking about differences in food, maybe differences in um, time management and all these things versus being laid back or whatever, mm -hmm. differences in personality and upbringing, as in voicing out the things that you say, which we're going to go through all of that. Um, the core of all of this is going to be bridging. Yeah. A bit of both worlds, which is technically what you are. Yeah. And I think, in my opinion, that yes, because you're from a different culture or a different country, the differences will be bigger. But I feel that no matter if you would be with a Serbian guy, you would also need to build bridges. Because you're not the same person. Yeah, whoever you're with. Yes. But here we're looking at yeah, whoever bigger, you're with. We are building bigger bridges, probably, yeah. because the differences are more profound. Yeah. But you will need to build bridges anyway. With anyone? Yeah, with friends, with family. I mean, my dad doesn't work the same way as I do, so we have to build a bridge there. Yeah. So you're always building bridges. It's just like, I think 
there is an art or muscle to building bridges, and you you will get better yeah, at it. Yeah, but what we, what I would say is um, <laughs> what would you say? It, it should be a conscious effort. Yeah, definitely. From both parties, actually. So yeah. if these things frustrate you, I think you should let him know and encourage him that. Um, so you, you you don't you don't have to try and change the person. You can't, which is. I, I, one of the worst things you can ever do in any relationship, trying mm -hmm. to change the other person, is rather trying to uh, live with the person by knowing who they are. And yeah. this is where effort comes in. So it has to be a conscious effort on both sides. If he's too laid back, maybe if he knows that these things are important to you, he can you know, also make an effort to meet you at a certain, at a certain point. And if you're also too um, quick, with planning into the future and doing all these things and the effort seems to be coming from only you, maybe you can also bring your plans a bit to the present yeah. to meet his laid backness. So he does a bit with, okay, like Elaine was saying, if you're gonna do plan for five weeks, why don't you bring it to this week? This is what, you know, it would be nice to do. So that he also tries to meet you up for this week. Yeah. Instead of trying to, A, seven weeks into the future, what are we doing? And he's kind of like, chill because he doesn't plan that far yeah yeah so that's one um, cultural difference in terms of what i've seen in yeah. a lot of european um, countries and people the efficiency bits and planning things and control or the fake control but i think it's also because the environment is like that you have things that work in a certain way yeah but just because it works, do you need to stretch yourself as a human being? That's what I'm wondering about. Yeah, but um, if you find your place, if you find yourself in a place where the culture, the people are all doing it, it feels odd. And to if, not do it. Yes, and if that's what you've always known. Yeah, so it's good to step out of your yeah. own what is normal. Yeah, if that's what you've always known, it doesn't come off as... Oh, well, you're, you're I think a lot of yourself. people will have a stress in the Netherlands, but anyway, yeah. it's fine. It's a different conversation. Yeah. So cultural difference, um, for example, on food. What do you have? To, what do you have to say about that? <laughs> I think in Netherlands the food culture is very different. So we eat small, small, small meals throughout the day. So in the morning, we eat small breakfast, yogurt with some fruits, maybe some crusty. Coffee. Coffee, of course. Then around 11, you eat an apple or something fruity or a small biscuit. Then at 12, 1, you eat your boteram, boteram, what is boteram that? bread oh. with cheese and maybe a small salad on the side, but that's even not regular. And then around 3, you eat something sweet like Snickers or something like sweet and then in the evening you eat warm you eat yeah, yeah, something yeah, yeah. like potatoes or bread, pasta or bread, rice bread, and bread. then you might drink a cup of coffee for the evening and then you go to bed and in Ghana we don't do these things we eat heavy 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 in the if, morning if you're fortunate to have yeah if you're fortunate to have a, a three um no you don't do three meals in Ghana it's not it's, you do yeah, it depends you on do. the food. It, on the it, it depends on the food, on the person, and who, who you, are. you are. But on average, it's supposed to be three. Most mornings, even though you're doing heavy, it's sometimes even in your porridge and the bread with it. And the amount of porridge and bread and groundnuts and all those things, or the oats, amount. or hey. whatever it is. So it's, it's still heavy, even if, you know, it's warm meals. I'm not going to just eat yeah. toast no. for the sake of it. And, and, and I think the timing is also different. So in Netherlands, you have set times to eat. So in the morning, I know when my breakfast will be. It will be between 7 and 8. And then in the evening, around 6, I'm like, I'm hungry. I want to eat. And in Netherlands, we have a tradition. I don't know if you call it tradition. But we eat, like they always say, Dutchies eat around 6, like on the dot. That's what we do every night. And you eat at the table, you eat together and you talk. 
Yeah. That is at least what I grew up with. I can't speak for the whole of Netherlands, but at least that's how. And uh, here in Ghana, I have a few friends who are also Dutch and they have a Ghanaian spouse. <laughs> and most of them have just given up. Like I'm not eating together with my spouse. Because in Ghana, you don't know whether you're going to eat at five, four, or eight, eight, nine. You don't know. It depends on your activities. Yeah. And I, I really like to eat together. But for him, it's a conscious effort to like, do you want to eat together? And we had to talk about that because sometimes yeah, he, would, he would say, no, I don't, I'm not going to eat now. And then I would be sad. <laughs> Yeah, because she wants I to eat be together. I so sad because I want yeah. to eat. Like, I want to have a, to talk with you. But also the talking under the eating, it's also not something very Ghanaian, right? Most of the not times really. when you eat, you eat. You maybe have a word or like a, a few or words. Two. But, but it's, not, it's not a place for talking. Yeah, and that is also something I never thought of before I came to Ghana. That we eat, we talk and we eat at the same time. Like in the Netherlands, it's a moment of community coming together at the table, talking, yeah. talk about your week, talk about your day, like, and... It's, it's, it's more than just food. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's more than just food. It's, it's a time or it's an opportunity to spend time together. Yeah. Especially because, see, so I understand here because as, uh, you have a lot of um, plant activities in the day a lot of people also do that individually mm -hmm. so yeah, you true. don't get to spend time together in the day no you don't that's true yeah that's definitely true while over here yes now it's different because people go to work and everything but back in the day most of the jobs were informal most of the jobs back in the day i growing up mm -hmm. your mom had either a store or something or whatever it is or even if she was a teacher and that was a bit formal not a bit formal, formal, formal. She would still be home at a certain point. The kids would have closed from school. She would cook. And then you eat, um, not together, but mom would be home. But mm. there was never a point where the whole family had every, something to do and they would go and do. And we all come back at the same time. Time and look forward to six o'clock as our meal time. And that's where we share how your day has been, what you're yeah. looking forward for the week. No. Yeah, that's true. But my grandparents, they actually ate warm in the afternoon. In your time? Yeah. So, so whenever I would go to my grandparents' house to stay over or something as a kid, we would eat warm through lunch and it was so weird to me. <laughs> so what changed? I don't know. I think... Is it the fast life that I like, think grew? it was... It was a slower time then. Or what I'm also thinking, a lot of people used to work in factories, like factor on factory shifts. Yeah. And then there was a long day, so maybe that's why they ate like a heavy in the afternoon, so it was an and then in the evening era. you would eat br bread. Well, industrial era. I think my grandparents, yeah, they grew up. Factory work after and all those 45. things were like yeah. a lot. Of, now things are more automated. Yeah, and that's true. Inclined. So maybe that's why. Yeah. So, so this the is thing, Yeah. So, so that might also that might also be it yeah and in ghana i sometimes miss the vegetables <laughs> i really like vegetables yeah i know in in ghana you, you use a lot of tomatoes onions um we blend it we blend it's more like a stew kind of yeah we thing. blend it into it's the not, thing with the spices the and all those things yeah crunchy vegetables but we do do crunchy vegetables but it's not from time um, to time we do. And for example, I know how to make eggs too. My mother-in-law told me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I add like carrots and green pepper and, uh, you know, other vegetables just to make it a bit more you. you. So that's also, again, the advice, like see how you can twist it, give it a tweak to make it a bit of you. Because the first time I added the vegetables, my mother-in-law was looking like, why are you doing that, girl? Um, but now she knows I like it. So that's why yeah. she's cool with it. And whenever we make eggs, too, then she asks, like, should we add carrots? Same, we made jollof this weekend. And then my sister-in-law was like, do you want to add vegetables? And I'm like, yeah. 
I want to add vegetables. Because for us, the vegetables are blended into the stew. And it, yeah. no, we do add carrots, mm. we do add um, green peppers, but not in the amount. Yeah, very small, small, small. Not very small. Yours oh, okay. is a bit above average. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Yours is a bit above, like you, a lot of carrots, a lot of green peppers, zucchini, like. Oh, zucchini. A lot. <laughs> Whilst we would rather, you know, sprinkle a bit on it to have a bit of texture, but not necessarily overtake the whole sauce yeah. with it. Yeah, and I think... So it's bridging. Oh, sorry. I think Here, yeah. I'm now thinking with the food and the planning wise, we do have a lot of discussions, heated discussions about what to eat for dinner. Because I am already thinking about the next meal. Often when lunch is done, I'm like... Around six, I have to cook. So you're planning again? Planning again. While he is just like, when I ask, like, what do you want to eat? I'm not hungry. Yeah, you figure it out when you're hungry. <laughs> but when I'm hungry, I cannot think. So I need to plan ahead. <laughs> so that one, we do get a bit of frustrated sometimes because he's like, why are you already think about dinner? It's just four o'clock. But I'm already like ahead of the game. Like, hello, we have to eat in two hours. What are we going to do? <laughs> Uh, right? Yeah. And it's annoying for you sometimes because... And then he, because he's not hungry, he doesn't know what to eat. I'm like, we need to move, people. <laughs> yeah, so, so um, I guess, I guess um, like we're saying, ultimately is... If you have a partner who's open-minded, it will save you a lot. Because then it means that... Yeah. They are open to discussion, they are open to trying new things, they are open to bridging and they are open to yeah, compromising and finding a way that both yeah. of you can accommodate each other. And if your boyfriend, I don't know how long you've been together, if you're st still together then it's a good thing. So yeah. some of these things are things that you should just consider that okay fine, it's uh, a cultural difference that needs to be... Yeah. Addressed? Yeah, addressed. And not yeah. like ruled out or say that because, uh, <laughs> for example, with respect and oh, yeah. doing things for people or speaking a certain way or people, unspoken rules when it comes to cultural differences with regards to relating to people that a woman is supposed to or a man is supposed to do these things or women don't say these things to their partners or men don't say these things to their partners or men don't... Yeah. When it comes to that and you're in a relationship with somebody from a different culture, start afresh. Whatever you know doesn't apply or it's not absolute. That's what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, that's true. Whatever you've grown up knowing isn't absolute. You have to be open. Even, even when you're both Ghanaian, you grew up in different homes. Yeah. You could have had parents who were much more laid back and allowed you to do certain things, which, when you grow up, make you seem a bit spoiled to other people. And then you might have people, somebody who grew up with stricter parents and they do things a certain way and they demand it and make you rather seem lazy to them or something. So some of these things... Yeah. A quick word or a conversation would hatch it out and you'll be able to see that, oh, okay. Yeah, and I also think, yes, there are cultural differences, but there's also the layer of language. And then there's also the layer of personality. Because Kwame is Ghanaian, so yes, he's a bit more laid back. But he's very strict in time, which is his personality. Mm, yeah, I guess. So it's a different, like, even though the culture, the, the Ghana culture might be a bit more laid back than the Dutch culture, that does apply to a certain extent. But because his personality is also there, he is a bit more strict on time than maybe an average Ghanaian, so to say. So also be careful jumping to conclusions where things are coming from. Um, and the language one, uh, so for example, with the respect thing. I, if I literally translate how I would ask something politely in Dutch, then I would say, could you... Um, do you want to... Do, do you want to maybe get the laundry? <laughs> Which, See how he translates? Do you and want he to was maybe get like, the laundry? Like, what the hell do you mean? Do you wanna, it sounds more... What do you mean? A, a bit passive-aggressive, like, oh, I did laundry. Do you want to maybe get it? Like, yeah. Uh, well, I, in, uh, if in Dutch, I would say, kun je misschien uh, de was uh, pakken? Which is very polite. 
<laughs> so now he told me that it's better to say, could you please get the laundry? Get the laundry for me. Do or... you want to maybe get the laundry? Like, <laughs> and we had a lot. No. Of lot of um, discussion about it. So even though my intention was good, well, good intentions only get you this far, because the impact was different for him. Yeah. And in the end, it's, a no, it's not, I mean, intentions are important, but I need to focus on the impact it has on him. And it didn't work. It would confuse him. And then it would confuse me because I was like, I thought I was polite and now he, he's frustrated with me, agitated. Yeah. So focus also on the impact and talk about your intentions. Because later, we f I really had to repattern that. That I don't say, do you maybe, blah, 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 could we maybe, could we maybe do this together? Well, I really wanted to do it yeah. together, but then I didn't so know how to ask. Conflict. So the language... Something that might be very polite in Serbia might very be rude in Cameroon. Or come for it, not very rude, come for it as a bit um, insensitive. Or yeah. Or too forward or a bit passive, yeah. aggressive. And I do think, yeah, the open-mindedness is really key because I cannot be with somebody who is very set in its way and doesn't want to listen to me. So also in the respect element, I respect you as my partner, but I'm not gonna go very traditional as being a wife when a man comes home, you just you only quickly, sit yeah. and I'll serve you dinner and I'll wash your dishes and do everything else you need. I <laughs> clean your shoes, wash your underwear. Yeah. Like I do these things, but I do them for us. I don't do them necessarily for him. But that's part of culture, we yes. Do, we do it together. Yeah. We do what we have to do. It's not that you do it because you are the wife. Yeah. So there, and I think no that there's a cultural layer there. As in the Netherlands, it's quite horizontal in uh, relationships. So you are my equal. Yeah. That's often how we approach people. Like, I will be respectful, but I'm not going to... Bow to oh, you. Worship. We don't like to worship the Dutch. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dutch or, so uh, I don't know. That's another conversation. Uh, and, but then there's also me as a person because, yes, I'm a feminist, so I, I'm not going to do all these things for you just because I happen to be a woman. We are doing it together. If I'm good at the laundry, I will do the laundry, but then you can maybe pick up some other things in the house. Yeah. So there's the personality as well. And then the language is how you talk about it. So it's impo important to address it. And then you move forward together. Do so you he knows. Maybe sweep the room? Do you maybe want to record a YouTube video? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. So I think you're right. It make yes, there are challenges. It makes it frustrating. But it also now we are laughing about the maybe. Like, do you yeah, maybe but want before to? it wasn't it was quite so, like yeah. Yeah, it's fun, challenging and and uh, frustrating all in one. Yeah. And it's up to you to define the layers with your partner and talk about it or at least address it. Uh, I'm sure some conversations are difficult and it's good to ask questions, not the questions that the other person feels they need to defend it. But for example, I, we had a conversation about hair yesterday because Kwame did his hair. Don't you think it's lovely? Um, but my hair type, as you can see, is very different. So I don't know a lot about his type of hair and how you should care for it. Uh, what needs, what is even being done at the barber or the hairdresser, I don't even know. Yeah. And that's, I mean, you can find all things of that, but I don't know. So then he's explaining to me what happens and he's sending me pictures. So I know, okay, this is what happens in the saloon. and. Um, so also try to ask questions. Okay, so why are you, why are you doing this without dismissing anybody? I just want to learn. I think that's also a nice uh, re reminder to just ask. They are your partner. Hopefully you're comfortable with them, and then you can ask. Okay, so why did you want to, to do this with your hair? Yeah. And you go from there. Yeah. Um, so. And sometimes you come to find that it has no cultural meaning True. to wanting to do I just wanted to do it because I just wanted to do it. It's a style. And that's, again, your personality. Yeah. So 
try to find the layers in your interactions. Is it cultural? Sometimes we run into something and we're like, why are we having a different opinion on this? And then maybe not in a moment, but later we'll sit down and talk about it. Yeah. Ah. So these are a few um, examples of some of the things that we encounter. Of course, your individual um, uh, encounters or relationships will be different. So I'll be actually happy to also hear from you if you are in an interracial relationship or even you are in a relationship with somebody from the same race but culturally you're very different and you have certain clashes, you can also comment down below what some of these things are and how you manage it. But ultimately, like we're saying, it's open-mindedness, communication and accepting that your differences yeah. don't have to separate you. But there's a way to bridge it and make it Yeah, you know, and compatible. remember, it's not always pretty. I think that's with every relationship. You, you're not going to always get the rainbows and the unicorns the first time. It yeah. takes time to grow. A relationship is work. No matter whether it's family, a loved one, or a friendship, you have to put in the work. So put in the work, show up for each other. And yeah, it's going to be messy and gray and everything. But I also feel that that's where the coming back to the magic, that's where the magic is. Yeah. Because once you understand it, you can build from there. And the only way is up if you really want to. <laughs> wow. Oh. I'm like a pastor. Exactly. I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I don't know. What is going on? I feel so enlightened today. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, that's what we can say about this. I'm sure some of these conversations will be also repeated in coming days or coming weeks when we find a different angle or something yeah, else Yeah, so to let share. us know if you're interested in some other topics, topics that you want elements, us to so touch on. Yeah. And then we'll talk about it. So in the meantime, I hope that we've answered your question very well. And we're going to end it here. And I'm doing this because this woman has a tendency of running. <laughs> so do running like this. Dummy? <laughs> yeah, it's verbal diarrhea instead. So do like this uh, video if you know you found it useful. Oh. And subscribe to the channel. This is so mean because he asked me to be on the YouTube video. So yes. He as me. Yes. You of, she often says she's not comfortable, but when she I gets comfortable, not. she gets too comfortable, and then my control kicks in, and I'm like, can we just, you know? And then somewhere. when the video does well, he forgets about me having verbal hey, diarrhea. Look, man, <laughs> please like this video, subscribe, and we're gonna bring you another video hopefully very soon. We've done well by bringing you two in two weeks, which we seldom do. So yeah, thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Doi doi. Mm-hmm. <laughs>